Hello everyone, my name is Francisco Cantu, and with the college application season in full swing, I will be covering the biggest differences between early action and early decision. In this video, not only will I be covering all the pros and cons of each of the applications, but I will also be sharing the main strategies that we recommend to our students at Best College Aid so that they can implement them on their list and they can maximize their odds of acceptance respectively to their schools. So by the end of the video, you should not only understand the difference between all the different types of applications, but you should also have a plan of action for your own set of applications. But now if you find everything that we're sharing with you today useful, please go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons because they really help us help you and you can stay up to date with all things related to college. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Early decision. Early decision is simply when you apply to one school and you apply early. Usually the deadline can be as early as October, but there could also be some that are early November, mid-November, and as late as December. And the whole point of applying early is that you find out your decision early. This could be anywhere from December to January. Now, if you get accepted, the thing about early decision that's different to other types of early applications is that you have to go there, okay? It's binding. So what are the pros of this? Less stressful of a process. Since you find out early, you can go into the holiday season knowing where you'll be going to college. Another pro is that it shows commitment. So you are an admissions officer and you have an early decision applicant who knows that because this is a binding application they really want to go to this university so in some instances the admissions and acceptance rates for people who apply early decision could be higher than the acceptance rates for people who apply regular decision cons however as i mentioned is that this is a binding application so if you do get accepted you have to withdraw other applications and you have to go to the school now, although there are some exceptions as to when you can opt out of your early decision acceptance, for the most part, you have to go there. So when do you apply early decision? You do this when you have a dream school, when you have a school that no matter what happens, if you get accepted, you know you'll be going there. You base this on academic programs, on a school that has had your interest since you've been a young child, somewhere that you know, boom, if I get there, I will go there no matter what. Other than that, might want to keep your options open but yeah early action early action is another type of early application and usually you apply early again could be as early as october 15th and it could be as late as december there are multiple deadlines there's first early action second early action but bottom line you apply early you find out early now what's the difference between this early action and what we just discussed earlier in early decision well early action is not binding so unless they have any specific policy at the school because schools are different they each have different policies for the most part what you can expect for an early application is simply you apply early you find out early you do not have to withdraw any sort of other application if you are accepted pros it's a less stressful process you find out early going to the holiday season having an idea you know, since it's not early decision, you do not have to go there. But since you've been or not been accepted, you have an idea of what the coming months are going to look like. Uh, so this leads me to my second pro. It helps shape your strategy for the rest of regular decision strategy. Because if you find out early that you got accepted to a top school, you might not apply to some other schools you would have otherwise. But if you do not get accepted to an early action school, then you might want to start thinking about where you rank with the rest of your college list. So having those, having that information and those decisions early can really help shape your list going forward. Finally, the last pro is that, as I mentioned, you do not need to withdraw other applications if you are accepted. Again, it's all about keeping your options open so that you can maximize odds of acceptance and then once you get in, make the best decision for your future. Cons. One of the biggest cons of any type of early uh, applications, whether it's early decision or early action, is that if the student does not have good enough credentials, so let's say you have only taken the SAT or ACT once and you got a score that it's, you know, below average or you do not have the GPA that you need, you're below the, the standard or, or, or what's the average of the incoming class at that school, then by applying early, you're kind of submitting a weaker application than if you waited and you, you know, make your credentials stronger by doing a couple of extra service hours if you don't have enough or taking those standardized tests again and getting your grade up. Again, the cons are that if you do not have those strong credentials, you need to kind of wait. It would be better to wait for regular decision because you are better off applying with a stronger application later than a weaker one sooner. 
And again, it's all a game of strategy and statistics, so make sure that you go and research what are the particular acceptance statistics for early action, early decision, whatever type of application they offer at one school, check out what those percentages are for acceptance and see which type of application maximizes your odds. But we'll cover this later on in the video. Okay, when you do early action, you do this if your application statistics are competitive enough as they are. And then once that's the case, you apply to as many schools uh, early action as you possibly can, unless you know there's a, posi a policy that early action is restrictive for some schools. Some schools do have that, that policy, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. But for the most part, if your application is already as strong as it can be and you don't need to take any extra exams or anything like that to bring it up, go ahead and apply. It will really help out with your organization, peace of mind. So yeah, take care of that. All right, finally, rolling admissions. Rolling admissions, uh, they have an admissions deadline that opens and you can submit your application anytime after that up until the end of that deadline. So the school will then receive your application and then they will make a decision on the spot as soon as they receive it. So. I can apply to a school rolling admissions this week. You can apply to that same school two weeks from now. I will hear back from that school when they get my application. You will not hear then, but you will hear when they get your own application. So they do not have a decision deadline based on, you know, a giant applicant pool that have to apply, boom, by this day, but rather they make decisions on a rolling basis. So hence the name rolling admissions. So schools will continue to evaluate applicants up until uh, the whole class is filled up for the spots. And that lends itself to the following pros. So it accommodates your busy senior schedule. You know, if you're a senior that's battling with deadlines and assignments to graduate so that you can finish off strong, uh, having rolling admissions can really help you go ahead and work on your application a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there and then you apply on your own time. And it's also good if the applications are still open for any last minute uh, options or schools that you hadn't applied to before, but if they have not filled out that class, you can go ahead and do rolling admissions. Now cons, they're harder to keep organized because you do not have that accountability of, okay, there's this deadline that I have to meet it by, and it's kind of more up to you. So if you're not as organized of a person, I recommend writing it down and keeping that organized for you because otherwise it's gonna get stuck in the back burner, so. My final piece of advice is to apply as early as possible when the schools offer rolling admissions. And as long as your application is competitive, if you get it out of the way early, you'll be better off for the rest of your senior year. Finally, as promised, I'm gonna tell you all the strategy that we recommend to our students at Best College Shade so they can maximize their odds of acceptance at the schools in their list. So step number one is to come up with that first list, you know, base it on what's good for you, what programs they offer that match your, you know, academic interests, your geographic inter geographical interests, whatever it is that you want in a college, make that list, you know, divide into safety target, um, reach schools and go ahead and finish that up. Step number two is to understand the difference between early action, early decision, rolling admissions and regular decision. If you watch this video, you should be covered for step number two. Next up, we have step number three is to combine that list that you have from step number one and match it with your understanding of step number two, each one of which uh, the types of application that they offer and go ahead and determine which schools offer which policies within your list. So list uh, school number one offers early decision and regular uh, admissions. So school number three is only rolling admissions. Go ahead and fill that out. Keep track of that, write it down so that you know what your options are. Next up, we have step number four, which is to determine what your strategy is going to be. So you're going to research statistics, admission statistics, as I mentioned earlier in the video, based on the type of application and based on the specific school, which one has higher percentages of being accepted and which school has, you know, particular GPA requirements that you meet or uh, standardized test scores that you meet. Go ahead and compare those statistics that you currently have with statistics of application and the incoming class for previous years. And you'll be able to get a pretty good idea as to what you should be doing for each school, what type of application you should be doing for each school. Which leads me to the final step number five, which is to make those final decisions. What you should have for step number five is a finalized list of the number of schools and the type of application you will be completing and when you will be completing it by. And again, you should do this based on ranking of the school, which one's your top choice. This might help you determine if you're gonna do early decision, uh, which one has statistics that you already meet based on, you know, GPA, standardized test scores, and which ones you wanna keep in the back burner or which one accommodates best to your schedule. So go ahead and figure that out, follow those five steps, and you should be maximizing your odds of getting into each one of those schools respectively. 
So there you have it, y'all. That was our video on the difference between early action, early decision, rolling admissions, regular decision, and all the different types of applications. Hope this really was of use to you, this college application season. Best of luck. If you want to learn more about how to maximize your odds of acceptance and also a little bit more about how to pay for college and, you know, get the most financial aid and scholarships available, go ahead and click the link down below and that will take you to our free 45 minute webinar. Take the time to watch that. It's super, super helpful. And um, I'll see you next time.